While the gaming community is torching Sweet Baby Ink to the ground, shining a light on every project they've touched, watching the suddenly slow death of the propagandist news outlet Kotaku, their writers throwing fits that they have to do video game journalism now, the thousands of layoffs in the game industry where the majority of those layoffs were DEI hires that scream in unison against the patriarchy of the industry they work in, there's an entity that exists that acts as the foundation that all of this is standing on. These companies that we've seen in our Twitter feeds are all different heads of the same woke Hydra. And ESG funds are the heart of this activist monster. Let me introduce you to the toilet world of ESG funding. Uh, ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. Because if you're concerned about tech, gaming, and movie industries laying off thousands of employees, the idea that most of them could be DEI hires should be pretty interesting when you think about the Sweet Baby Inc. and Kotaku situation, and where they've been getting their money in the first place. This rabbit hole is a chasm, so no deep dive here, just the quick and dirty info, so if you're so inclined, you can take a peek into the void yourself to see what you find. ESG funding is the root of all funding for these activist types of companies. That funding comes from companies like BlackRock, a multinational investment company. Now here's what Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, has to say about forcing behavior. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. If you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? You have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And They're asking companies to force behaviors. And within BlackRock, he's telling them that if the workers don't align themselves with the woke work of the company, then their compensation could be impacted. Just in case you didn't know, the definition of coercion is the practice of persuading someone to do something by using force or threats. Interestingly, oppression is defined as prolonged cruel or unjust treatment or control. So BlackRock will provide ESG funding to companies as long as they align themselves with the DEI goals of BlackRock. Recently, it was revealed that A44, the studio making Flintlock The Siege of Dawn, had been oppressed by their COO Audria Tops Harho from the moment she was hired at the studio. According to reports, she immediately made the team turn their white main character into a person of color and made them hire Sweet Baby Inc. Outside of clear, woke agenda-driven changes, she denied raises to developers, postponed evaluations for six months, hid the salaries of top executives including herself, implemented operational and hiring changes that resulted in a team that didn't know how to make a video game, and told HR to tell anyone who complained or asked questions about the reasons for the changes that the reason is because I said so. The most telling thing, however, was the alleged embezzlement of ESG funding meant for A44 that was used to fund projects for her own company, Inclusive FX. It would seem that Audria was more interested in driving DEI within A44 in order to secure ESG funding for her own company rather than making Flintlock a genuinely good, diverse game for the community. These days, basically every major company has an ESG commitment. Whether it's genuine or financially motivated, I'll let you decide. But in my opinion, Audria's story of greed is probably more common than we think. Anyway, any company that talks about DEI or ESG has been touched by Old Man Blackrock, which is why DEI has become so prevalent among companies contributing to the seemingly endless diet of forced diversity in all aspects of our lives. Now here's the thing. In order to do what Old Man Blackrock says, companies need to hire according to DEI principles in order to gain ESG funding. People just like Audria Tops Harho. And from this one example, we see what kind of change one DEI hire can bring to an entire company in a very short time frame. The DEI directives these people follow aren't profitable. Regardless of what we or they think, companies are primarily focused on money. 
If you think they genuinely care about the DEI cause, then you probably believe Santa, the Tooth Fairy, and Dylan Mulvaney are real. And because they're focused on money, and DEI isn't profitable, you end up with thousands of DEI layoffs, with of course normal game developers getting caught up in that mess also. If we only look at that news at face value, all we see are these evil companies laying off these workers because they're all the hate words and they only care about money while their CEOs pocket their bonuses and walk away fat and happy, just like Audrea did. But take a look at this. Back in December of 2022, Sturm Tiger Cobra posted this on a forum I forgot to take note of. He says, FYI, according to multiple insider sources and the latest rumors, are expecting ESG funds, stakeholder capitalism, to collapse slash dissolve in 2023. That means layoffs across the entire tech sector and the entire video game industry. Sega slash Relic is reliant on ESG funds such as BlackRock and Vanguard. What red flags did Relic slash Saga ignore? Corporate malinvestment, history repeats itself, why? If I find the link to that form, I'll post it in the description below. In the meantime, here is a link to a Bloomberg article called The Virtue Bubble is About to Burst. Good riddance. It's an archive link so you can get past the paywall and just read the article if you want. Anyway. These people saw the writing on the wall, and in late 2023 to 2024, we saw all of those layoffs. The companies that were slurping up all of the ESG money they could from Old Man BlackRock found that the money was running out. And since all the DEI hires were being paid with ESG money, because the ESG funds are all about DEI in the first place, the companies could no longer afford to keep paying those DEI hires. Literally. Kotaku is the most recent example. If we assume that they were being subsidized with ESG funds because their normal day-to-day -day work wasn't making enough money to keep the lights on, and those ESG funds are already starting to dry up, maybe the higher-ups decided to pull the plug once the Sweet Baby Ink story decimated their credibility, as much as they had already. And now, because the ESG funds aren't in the picture, they have to make the company profitable again. But there is no way that's going to happen. Their reputation is a complete mess. So they want to shut Kotaku down completely. But if they fire everyone, they have to pay severance and open themselves up to possible legal trouble. So just like how California companies ended their work from home programs to drive some of their employees to quit to avoid paying them severance, Kotaku is literally doing the same by asking their writers to churn out 50 game guides a week. They're being driven to quit, and the end result is a woke company going broke because the free ESG money hose has run dry, and because the general public thinks DEI makes products worse. And finally, the companies don't have another profit source to run off so they're going to die out. And with the consultancy detection groups picking up more titles infected with DEI, game companies are going to start avoiding forced diversity like the plague. Especially when titles like Palworld, Helldivers 2, and Stellar Blade prove that games that are designed to be fun and they ignore DEI can be extremely lucrative. Kotaku and Sweet Baby Inc. are just the beginning. Earlier this week, like the 18th or 19th, it was announced that the Texas School Fund pulled $8.5 billion from BlackRock because they plan to move from ESG funding to what they're calling transition investing. Basically a move to clean energy, and since Texas has an oil industry, it doesn't make sense for Texas to invest in something that's going to hurt their own finances. But what matters to us is that they're moving away from ESG funding and focusing on energy and environmental stuff. The social stuff might be taking a backseat, especially because it hasn't been profitable overall. If it was, they'd still be doing it. Now, right there, I was actually, I thought I was done, but it turns out that the Hydra is growing another head. This is Bridge. It stands for Belonging, Representation, Inclusion, Diversity. The G stands for the gap between them and E, which stands for Equity. If I'm being honest with you, that's a pretty clever logo, but their goal is much more insidious. Here's what the founder of Bridge has to say about their goal. 
And our mission is really about moving the narrative of DEI away from philosophy to operationalizing inclusion as a business practice. So our North Star is that. Um, our North Star is not necessarily marketing per se, because we believe that inclusion needs to cross the entire organization, marketing included, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, everywhere from organizational practices all the way to advocacy. What she said here amounts to this. They want more people like Audrea Tops Harho to be implemented across the entire organizations of businesses to drive these companies towards advocacy, which is another word for activism. Their goal is to turn the operational goals of a company to make inclusion a business practice rather than a philosophy. This means that if you work at a company that takes part in this business model, you automatically become part of the DEI activist machine. She even says as much in the interview. Now while this doesn't seem to be affecting the game industry right now, they specifically said that they want to get into other industries after they've established themselves. But this overall can only be good for companies though, right? Just take a look at the people Disney hires and what happens when their woke projects fail. Kathleen Kennedy gets a dedicated South Park episode, the world gets a Cartman meme, and the Star Wars fans get the Acolyte. The woke Hydra has many heads, and while we may keep cutting those heads off and companies like BlackRock and Bridge grow more, maybe those new heads will stop looking at the video game and entertainment industries. At least long enough for the gaming community to prove that quality and fun promote more diversity and inclusivity than forced woke activism ever has. If you don't think that's possible, I suggest that you check out Blue-Eyed Samurai and imagine what game devs could do with a diverse cast of characters if they cared about creating an amazing experience designed to be high quality fun, instead of a interactive lecture made by these people. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. You're welcome.